Hi, um, my name is Grishma Gadikota. I'm a faculty member in the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Cornell University. I also have a field appointment in the School of Chemical and Biological Engineering. In my group, we work on developing sustainable solutions in response to a changing climate while continuing to meet our growing energy and resource demands. I discovered my passion for science when I was uh, really in middle school. And I think I was drawn to science for many reasons, both for the fact that there really is a need to address some of our pressing challenges that we face in society now, but also because there's this, a sense of open-endedness to it, right? I mean, there's this, this sense of hypothesis posing and being able to develop a set of methodologies and you never know if the answer is going to be something that you thought it might be. It might be something that's completely different and that's okay, but it's the truth. So in many ways, I found science to be my version of a truth-finding mission. There's been a century of innovation in fossil fuel science. As humanity, we've progressed in our ability to uh, transport ourselves, do the things that we do, largely because of that. But now when we look back at the impacts, we have to deal with the challenges of legacy emissions. If we put gigatons of CO2 into the atmosphere and about 20 to 30 percent of that actually ends up in the ocean. So there's this new emerging need really to understand how carbon transforms in nature and how we can harness that understanding to create solutions that are synergistic with nature. So a lot of work that we do in my research group is really inspired by nature. We call it geo-inspired or earth-inspired and there is a reason for it. As opposed to just cooking up completely synthetic solutions, we want to look at nature. We want to look to see how nature transforms certain elements, particularly carbon. And now we want to think about what we can do to accelerate those pathways. So one specific example is that of carbon mineralization, right? It's a pathway that nature takes. So if you have a solution, a lime solution, and if you just leave it outside, uh, hopefully not in a very windy day because then the water is going to evaporate, but on a reasonably warm day like this where there's not a lot of wind, you'll see that eventually it's going to mineralize into a solid. It's going to take a long time to do it, but eventually it's going to turn into that. We don't have that kind of geologic time to address the kind of solutions that we need. So we actually work in a lab to identify specifically what pathways we can accelerate to transport or partition that CO2 into the liquid phase and then convert it into a durable solid that now we can sequester. Another angle uh, in our research really involves trying to understand the fate of CO2 in subsurface environments. And the reason for that is there's only so much CO2 that we can actually use and convert to products, but we eventually need to start storing gigatons of CO2 in the subsurface environments. We have no choice. So then the question becomes, how do we monitor that fate of CO2? How is that CO2 going to interact in really small spaces in tiny environments? Uh, is it going to mineralize? Is it going to stay as a liquid? What are those chemical interactions? And it's not just the chemistry too, right? It's also about if we do form something, what does it mean for the stability of the formation? What does it mean for the mechanics of that environment? So being able to connect across disciplines to address a challenge is something that we're working on very actively. And the process of doing this, we've actually harnessed a lot of new techniques that we never thought would be useful. We started developing methodologies that now can go beyond just the science of carbon transformations and can be applied across other disciplines as well. And one of that is in the context of metal separations. I would say Cornell is a very unique place to do the kind of things that we do because there's a very specific line of questioning about what is different that we're offering to the world compared to what already exists. And I like that our students and our faculty are always asking that hard question every single day. It's a big motivator. It's challenging, it keeps us on our toes, but it's what we need if we have to work ourselves out of some of the challenges that we have right now.